I think we're on. <laughs> Hello there, everyone, and welcome to. Um, I think at least for now, it's the last scheduled. Uh, it's the last scheduled live stream in English, but we've done some quite exciting things with the uh, with the Danish site. Uh, on, on the Danish YouTube where we have um, we have made some live streams where we have uh, been three or four people to talk about certain types of fishing and stuff like that and I think that format is actually quite good so uh, welcome everyone and um, I think I think you'll see more live streams in the future also even though we don't have scheduled anymore for for the next period um, I just want to ask as always um, is is the visual okay? Is the audio okay? And uh, can you hear me and and see what I what I am what I'm doing here? That really would have been cool. And hello, Paul and Benjamin and Hansik and Michael and Kat Denmark and Lars. Um, so nice of you to join. Um, do, 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 do. Today we're gonna tie two different flies. Um, and and these are two quite different uh, flies in size. The first one we're gonna tie is something that I just cooked up uh, during this winter. Um, just wanting to go out fishing for pike, especially with popper. So this is kind of um, an idea that was uh, perfect. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank thank you, thanks a lot for 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 letting me know that everything is perfect. So as I said, this is something that I that I cooked up um, in my head um, uh, in, in the last couple of days for for pike. It's it's going to be a popper pattern. So um, I have a lot of strange and new ideas regarding how to tie this. So why not simply start that out by doing it live? You know what can go wrong? You know. <laughs> so uh, so. So um, today we're gonna tie a popper, and then we're gonna tie a small, a small nymph. Um, the popper is is gonna be, as I said, a bit different from from others. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to incorporate some some ideas. So basically, uh, I, I drink water today because that's all I had, and water is good for you. So let's swap the cameras here and get into it. Um, yeah, and hello, and, and, Sai. and Sai. I don't know how that's, uh, and Yen, hello Yen, and Benjamin, and Jim, and my fly fishing life, and so on. Okay, so the idea here is, uh, I like to tie uh, my poppers, I like to tie them on, them on tubes, because if you tie them, them on tubes, then, uh, then you can easily just uh, just add add your leader through them, and uh, and you will get the hook uh, moved further back into the into the actual wing of the fly, which will which will give you a better a better hooking percentage. So, uh, because the popper head is is so bulky and it it fills it takes up quite a lot of of, of, of space in the water. Um, you you will you will you will see that sometimes they 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 miss uh, the popper and and you get a higher success rate and a higher number of fish caught if you if you have the hook a bit further in the back. I do not like to have you could you could use a, a rig with the, with a stinger hook, but I, I don't like in general the stinger hook for for any of my pike flies because I think you know I would um, I would rather lose a fish or two more. And then be sure that that the stinger hook is not into the gills, uh, because uh, on on the few occasions where I tried the stinger hook, I found that I caught maybe a, a, a slightly larger uh, number of the fish that that grabbed my fly. But a lot of the times the hook was so down, the stinger hook was so down deep that it it actually damaged the the gills of the pikes. And uh, and I love the pikes, so I love them very much. So so I, I do not want to 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 put them at, at any additional risk so 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 that's why I don't use the stinger hook but for this popper here it's uh, and for poppers in general I think it's it's nice to have the the hook a bit further down and I'm gonna I would use the same hook for for a popper setup as I would for for my pike flies I use the Arix uh, 351 uh, barbless uh, and in size 60 okay enough of the ranting let's start tying and of course, if you have any questions, just post them out in the 
just post them. Hello, Heidi. Just uh, post them out in the commentary, and I will try to answer them as to to the best of my uh, my abilities. So we're gonna start out with uh, this is a black thread. I need to attach that properly. Uh, this is a black thread because uh, basically the color scheme of, of this fly, as I said, this is something I've just cooked up in my head. So it's not good. It, I don't have anyone to show you any fly to show you already. So we're just gonna start with the uh, with the black thread here, and uh, and I use a fairly thick thread for for these. This is a hundred and fifty dinya, uh, the the GP, GSP thread from from Bewus, which is is a really nice thread for for pikes. As I said, um, another crucial thing when you're tying when you're tying poppers is to not make the popper too long, because if the popper is too long, then you'll get a lot of a lot of uh, pikes that that miss your your flag or miss the hook completely. So we're gonna do that today. A popper that is not too long that is ideal, and it's it's the same color scheme as my as my all time favorite popper, which is called the uh, the. Pike Finder, I think I call it. I can't recall now. It's 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 been some years, uh, but I think it's called the pop the Pike Finder. Yeah, it is. It's the Pike Finder, and the color scheme is is black and orange. So I'm gonna take a bundle of this black bucktail here, and then I'm gonna try to dress it so it goes all the way around the hook. Uh, not the hook, the sh the the tube, of course. Then I'm gonna make two turns of the of the tying thread. Before I apply pressure, there we go. And this bucktail will stand out, and it will it will give the fly a broader profile, and it will also help to keep all the other materials uh, um, moved out from the from the tube, giving it a broader profile, which is is the the general idea here for for this popper. To have at least some uh, some some profile. Okay, so now you see it's it's uniform all the way around. Maybe I should. I think it looks like I should turn up the lights a bit. I'm gonna try to do this. I don't know. That's. No, I don't think that's too much. It's a bit easier to see. And it's it's difficult. I, I've tried a lot of different things with the lighting here. I'm just gonna cut away some of the bucktails here not all of it but some of it in front just you know it's a pike flight it doesn't really have that much of an effect however you uh, you do this so really just apply some pressure to that one and i'm going to use a small amount of my all time favorite pike fly tying material this is the uh, the big fly fiber and this is the color uh, that's called Fire Tiger. So it's it's a mix of a bit of chartreuse, a bit of yellow, and uh, a bit of flesh, and also uh, of course some orange, which is which is going to be the the general theme of this fly is is going to be black and orange. So this is as you can probably see, this is too long. If if I want my fly to not be as long uh, uh, as as I talked about before. Not to have it so long that it 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 gets hard to hook the pikes. So I, I take some of the the curls here I leave as is, and then I I simply just cut out some of the ends here that was um, of of the the ends that was uh, of the uh, of the straight type of fly tying. For 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 pike flies, uh, oh sorry, I have to swap the camera. Will Christian Hesseyer, actually not not now. That's not something I've planned to do another ragworm. I have one with marabou, and I have one that is uh, is made with with hackles and dubbing. So so I think I'm covered on on those, uh, because those are also the two I'm gonna have in my box. You could you could you could definitely do a lot more uh, different variations and someone one that's probably a bit more purple and. Uh, uh, and stuff like that, but but I think the ones that I have illustrates the technique quite efficiently, and and therefore I don't think there's it's necessary to do any more about that. See how nice this all looks? It's really really is a nice color scheme together the black and the uh, and the fire tiger here. It just looks it just looks awesome. 
So as you can see, it's not too long. It's slightly longer than the bucktail, but again, it's 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 all the way around the hook, and the bucktail really makes this stand out. <laughs> Benjamin Vila, I've been on two trips for sea trout, and both of them uh, we fished a full day um, in water that was about two degrees warm, or uh, maybe it, it's more it's 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 more correct to say that it was two degrees cold so no I haven't even seen a sea trout yet um, this year I'm hoping in next next week I'm hoping that the weather will will be better next week but when you when you go to fish for sea trout and and it's been six degrees f uh, minus during the night then you know it's the, the conditions is hard we fish some good stretches of water and stuff like that but but no luck so far but you know I'll get there, no, no, no problems at all. I'm not in a in any a, a rush. Okay, so these are the the two uh, main things, or the two first things. And in order to give this a bit more, um, a bit more flesh, then I'm gonna take some um, some of the orange um, flesh abu in holographic orange. This is a really, really nice color for for anything, but but for pikes in in particular. But also, you know, this color would be nice in in any any uh, any salmon fly or or something along those lines. And I just take a small bundle of this. And again, I tie this on there, so that it it goes all the way around the tube. There we go. And then to make sure that this stays in place, I apply a lot of tying thread. And then, because I don't want to waste this flesh here, I simply just turn this over. There we go. And tie it down once more. So it's it's tied it's tied down double. is gonna be really really awesome then the next thing I need to add to this fly is some hackles because hackles just looks awesome on poppers and uh, and it gives a really really nice effect so I'm gonna take an, an orange uh, I think this is a kirk I, I can't recall if this is a kirk or a whiting I have a few here and for the poppers for the poppers you don't need you don't need the longest the longest feathers. Some of these slapping feathers up here would be nice, um, because what you want is is you want something that kicks when the fly swims. So I'm gonna tie in uh, two or three feathers like these on each side. If you if you can get slapping, uh, then 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 that's basically I I am taking the slapping feathers and slapping is 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 basically just the. The, the feathers that are close to the tail part of the saddle, close to the tail part of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the rooster. Two more, and maybe that one. There we go. So now I have about six of these. And all the crazy stuff uh, is, is not, has not happened yet. But I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when we get to it. You, 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 won't, you, 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 you won't miss it. So, I'm going to add these three to one side and then three to the other side. So they, these are going to be on the side. So every time you strip this fly, every time you receive, retrieve this fly, these, these feathers here, they're going to really, really just kick out. Um, and, uh, and, and they're going to pulsate and move very, very erratic as soon as, uh, as, soon as, as you stop retrieving the fly. And one of the things, uh, the strange things I, I find with with pikes and, and poppers and, and pike in general is that they do not mind a fly that is not moving. So so many times when 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 I'm when I'm lying and fishing in 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 in, in what are they called? They are very very beautiful. They 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 live in ponds. This plant and they have I think they're called lilies of some sort. And they have these broad leaves that rest on top of the uh, on top of the water. I can't recall what they're what they're called. They're called oh, can in Danish, but I can't recall what they're called in in English. Um, uh, and uh, and and 
whenever you you put your popper into 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 one of the open areas in in one of these uh, patches of uh, there we go i don't know if you can see on the other video so i have all of these hackles just all the way around um uh, then it's it's a good idea to basically just place your fly in in the openings of the seaweed uh, and then and then just leave it there for for maybe five or six seconds before you start retrieving it and a lot of the times the pike will grab your fly even if it doesn't move because a lot of the time when frogs and stuff like that uh, that the pikes are feeding on um it's a, maybe i should uh, i can't do that um, uh, they will, they will, they will hold still for long, long periods of time. So the the pikes are 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 actually being a bit uh, provoked by by just having your fly hanging there without retrieving it. Good evening, Johannes. Water lilies, yes, of course. Lil lily pads, water lilies, of course. Water lilies, yeah. There, it was something with lilies. Yeah, it was cold, Rob. It was really cold. Uh, Jeanette Lykke Christensen. Um, uh, my fly tying vice is a Rensetti. Uh, and this is a Rensetti in a, in a special limited edition in blue. Uh, I think we will get a few more. We, we got three and all three were sold very, very fast. But I think we'll get a few more in uh, in, in blue. It's, it's a really nice vice, but it's also uh, maybe one of one of the most expensive vices out there but i you know i just saw the blue color here and i, I just had to have it so for this next step i'm going to use some uh, some marabou um, and uh, and you can use plain orange marabou if you like but i like these uh, these uh, barred marabou um, um, for this because uh, the striations just again it adds a lot of contrast it, it really really adds some some cool effect to the fly here uh, the feathers here are just phenomenal and you can see the striations really really well it just it, it just looks really good and i use a marabou hackle on most of my poppers as the finishing touch before the popper head because it gives a really really nice transition between the uh, between the actual body of the fly and then the uh, and then and then the popper head so tying this down here moving the tie thread a bit further up here and you'll you'll see exactly what i mean and then basically i turn this as a hackle so i fold everything back ah it came loose of my tube needle it's annoying just looks like madness <laughs> well basically it's just me adding a lot of different stuff that costs money to a uh, tube and then securing everything with <laughs> with my tying thread yeah yeah so there we have it need to make sure that all the fibers are backwards fold it back before I tie this down there we go I should have heated up the tube a bit before it because this is a very hard a very hot tube it's the sports fisher one apply some pressure here there we go and then I can cut away the heckle the marabou there we go I'm going to tie a bit on top of some of the marabou here. There we go. Oh, I hope I... Oh, it's perfect. There is a bit of bit of material left over here that I'm going to cut off. So... It just looks like... <laughs> just looks like some kind of parrot. I see that probably the next time I should swap lenses for this. <laughs> okay, Jeanette. Um good to know. Um I, I must warn you this vice is a, is expensive. The vice that I have here costs eleven thousand Danish kroner. So 
yeah, it is it is expensive, but it's it's also a vice for a lifetime. Gonna do it with finish, and then I'm not gonna add any glue yet because we're gonna add the glue um, as soon as we have prepared the head to put it on there. I'm just gonna take it out of the vise so you can you can maybe see it in full size, see it a bit better when I hold it up here. So basically that's that's what it looks like. So it, it does look a lot like a parrot, but it has a, a, a fairly broad profile. The hackles here just will make an, an enormous amount of noise in the water. The flesh of course will sparkle and stuff like that, but but you, you see the idea here. This just, it's gonna look freaking awesome out in the water. Okay, so for this next step of the fly, Sasquatch, Sasquatch one. I don't know where that is, David Smallwood, but, uh, oh, it's all the way up in the north, right? You have a lot of, lot of pikes up there, right, David? Um, for this next part, we're going to use a Flyman double barrel popper uh, shotgun popper, double barrel popper head, I think it's called. Um, and it has already a, a small hole here in in in, in one end, and uh, and uh, and in order for us to actually get this on the tube, I need to expand that. So basically, I'm gonna take a smaller scissor first. Basically, I take a scissor, and then I push the scissor all the way through the foam here to make. And, and you should be careful when you do this, so as, as not to do it uh, like this and push the scissor into your hands. Because if it slips and, and your scissor is sharp, which I hope it is, then you, you can have quite a lot of mess on your hands. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, your hands can be quite a lot of a mess. Is, is what <laughs> It's the same thing, you know what I mean. So, as you can see, I've pulled the, pushed the scissor all the way through here. In order to make room for this to fit over the, uh, the the tube, and because this tube is fairly large, then I take an even larger scissor and do the same thing with with this. You can use a screwdriver as well, I guess, or or something along those lines. And well, basically, now I have expanded the the hole here, and now it will fit on the tube. Have to swap cameras. So you see, it will fit on the tube now, and uh, and it will it will make the uh, the connection between the the head and the uh, and the rest of the fly look really really good. Um, be because of the the marabou and the hackles here, I I need to do this as uh, oh let's see how the uh, how the 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 funny stuff is is gonna turn out, and th then we can see if I'm gonna do a a, a normal tutorial of this one as well. Then I simply just slather all of this in Sabagap in order to get my popper head to stay in place. There we go. Uh, Daniel, for the for the big pack flies, I use the Oima tube fly needle. That is a really really good tube fly needle. So now we're ready. There is a lot of super glue there, and then we need to push this back and do it in in one consecutive motion so as as to make sure that it stays where it's it's placed there we go i think i need this uh, i don't know why it is so dark over there i have a, a lot of really really big uh, lighting all the way around and stuff like that it's just it's just a bit dark but i can pull off the fly so you can you can see it there you go. And now we're going to do a lot of different funny stuff. If I could just find the hole again. Oh. Yeah, you didn't hear that. I'm glad you didn't. Okay. So, for the next step, of course we need some eyes on this fly. So I'm just going to, there are some dentations and some grooves there already. So I'm basically just gonna gonna add a bit of uh, saber gap to that as well, and then I'm gonna add my eye. 
these big ones, they, they an, an eight millimeter eye will fit in there, I think. That's at least what I recall. And I have one that has some orange in it. Yeah, that looks that looks perfect. Gonna do it on the other side as well. And now comes some of the the new and exciting things I've thought about. Because I would like to have to give this even more a more swimming uh, swimming abilities and a lot of the time um just we just used some some rubber legs to pull pull rubber legs through the head here but I want to do something different I want to pull some uh, some hackles in here so in order for me to do that I need a tool I don't know if if you have one of these but it's a pretty cool tool it's it's basically they call it a leg puller I don't know if it has any other function in some other uh, uh, trade, but, but for, for pulling legs, it's quite good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jam this through the head, then place a feather in here, then pull it back. Um, and I don't know if it's possible to do uh, so you, so you, 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 you pull uh, legs through it from one side and then, uh, and then on the other side as well. In order for this to go smoothly through the head here, I'm just going to heat it slightly. So I simply just take my lighter and heat it. And then I push this through the head here as evenly as possible. So now you see I've, I've stuffed this through the head. And then I want two of maybe some, some of the broader feathers on here. That is a bit similar but not, uh, but not too wide because I want something that sticks out and it's going to look like legs. So I found these uh, these two here on the saddle. Found these two feathers here. And then I'm going to pull out all the the woolly part here. I've not done this before. So I hope it works. Then I'm going to place these two, the tips of the feathers here, inside the, uh, inside the leg puller. And then I'm going to pull. There we go. That actually looked really, really awesome. But the, the thing is, in order for this to stay in there and, and for this to be symmetrical, I need to pull my leg puller through the head again, and then do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to find two more hackles that are going to be uh, quite similar to the other one. There we go. Put them inside the leg puller. And then now I hope this works, because now I have to hold I have to to keep the two hackles these are here to place them where I can see them I need to to keep pressure on the two hackles that has already been pulled through and uh, when I pull the others through as well or it won't work so now I've pulled the others through as well this actually looks really, really awesome. You see how, how that looks? That looks really awesome. But the thing is, this is not very strong. So I thought of giving this a lot of thought. And in order to make it more strong, I'm going to try to put some sabre gap on the feathers here and then pull them the other way again. So one of these will stay, will will have some... I'll add, I don't know if this works, but it just... I'm just going to smother, slather some sabre gap on the hackle here. And then I'm going to try to pull this. There we go. I'll try to pull the other one a bit. There we go. Add a bit of sabre gap on the other side as well. You could probably lock this as well with some uh, just gonna try to put a bit of sabagab into 
into where the I must say this this really looks it looks really awesome. I'm going to show you on the other screen here. Yeah, it really looks it looks it looks awesome. You see how that looks? <laughs> it looks really 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 awesome. Of course, I have to wait for some of the saba gap here to dry a bit and then I'm going to cut away some of these feathers here that are mangled a bit. I'm just going to use one of my old scissors for that cleanup job. There we go. I've never done this before. I've never tried this before. So I'm I'm really pleased with, with how that actually looks. Yeah, it looks it looks awesome. <laughs> so you have these these long fins here. Kind of like a flying fish and it it I'm trying I try to pull this now and it feels relatively sturdy. So so I don't I have I don't have any doubts that these are going to stay there. So that's the first thing of these crazy things that I was I was thinking about. And now we're going to do the second crazy thing. Just going to swap cameras here because um, I, I must say this looks this looks really cool as it is, but I would like to make it even more insane. So what I want to do is I want to give this a mohawk. So I want to add this on top of the fly here to kind of give it a mohawk. So I'm gonna cut this. Um... <laughs> this is crazy stuff. So I'm gonna cut this uh, this this sunga strip. Uh, I'm gonna cut it so that it tapers, uh, because uh, if I just glue it on there, I have tried that before. Then it it f it falls off quite quite fast. So what I want to do is instead of just having it having it glued on top here, because then it's gonna fall off almost as soon as as the first pike strikes it. I'm gonna make sure that it stays in place. Firstly, I'm gonna. This is this is too long, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it down so it's not it's not as long. There we go, and I'm gonna see how that size looks on here. It looks good. It's a bit long still. I'm gonna cut it a bit shorter. There we go, and I'm also gonna taper the other end, just because that's gonna look better on. I don't think the pike mind, but now I have tapered the other end as well. But what I want to do now is in order for this to stay in place here and not just be glued on top. Yeah, I'm going to try something uh, something different. I'm going to take my uh, I'm going to take my leg puller again and then I'm going to push my leg puller through the tip of the popper head here. So it's going to stick out just in the forehead of the popper. And then I'm gonna take the 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 uh, then I'm gonna take the uh, the rabbit strip and put it inside the leg puller. Then I'm gonna pull it down and pull it into the popper head. Yeah, I use uh, I use uh, nine feet nine weight for for these. So now you can see. If if left as is, it actually looks really, really, really awesome. The mono through. I'm not sure how how to do that. Pull the mono through. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, smart mouth. I I don't I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's a punker popper, but but uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a better better version of the punger popper, Johannes, because this is gonna be more durable. Then I'm gonna fold the 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 punger, uh, the sunger strip uh, back, and then I'm gonna add a bit of glue here and making sure that I also glue all the way so some of the glue will soak down into the uh, down into the hole I made with the um, with the um, with the leg puller. And then I'm gonna turn this over, and I'm gonna try to fasten it on top of the head here by applying pressure on top of the glue. <laughs> it looks awesome. It looks awesome. 
I'm having fun. I hope you are, because I'm having a lot of fun. Then just to be sure, um, just to be completely, uh, to have this completely fastened, I'm just going to add a bit more super glue here. Hopefully this will seep down into the popper head. And, um, and I'm going to do the same thing uh, on the, if you can see, you can see the small yellow, the small yellow where the uh, where the uh, where the where the sunga strip comes out. I'm gonna cut that as much as possible. And then what you could do is you could probably seal it completely tight with some uh, with some uh, UV glue. But I'm just gonna have some some more sabagat, the universal the the glue that holds the universe together. I'm just gonna have some more sabagat here. And hopefully it will soak down and make the fly even stronger. Um, as I said, I haven't, I haven't fished this yet, but but I know that flies of this type they look really, really freaking awesome on the water, um, and uh, and and I really like the way the design of this. I mean, you you gotta love this. I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna take a picture of this as well. But <laughs> I mean. <laughs> You you gotta love this. It looks it looks it looks oh I've glued it to to my finger now. No, this is how I'm gonna have to go to work tomorrow. Or yeah, oh I got it off fairly fairly easily. So this is a beast of a popper, um, and uh, and and I I. I it was, uh, you know, it was just something that I thought of and thought would be fun. But, but I really, really like how this how this turns out. I really think this also will be a a, a, a fly that will catch a lot of fish. And you know, if if after five or six pike or something like that, the uh, the the me mohawk here it it falls off, then you know that's okay as well, because it's just it's just a cool pattern. It just it just looks nice, and uh, and it will fish it will fish great. These, uh, the color combination here is is a strong one for pike, especially on a popper. Um, it has all the right uh, the right materials, and the rest of the flies is very very durable, and will will definitely last for for a long time. So maybe the I think the fins is gonna is gonna stay there for a long time as well. But um, but if something were to go, I think it's gonna be the mohawk that's that's gonna be the first thing that that falls off the. Uh, the Mohican, uh, the Mohican Pike Finder. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a bit crazy, but but I I want I really like the the Mohawk. So so I thought of the solution of of just adding it to the uh, to the uh, <laughs> just pull it pull it down into the head. So that was the first fly. Now I have to uh, to change a bit of settings on the camera. Um, so so take five um, or maybe just three minutes or something like that. I have to move the camera a bit closer because the next fly we're going to tie is going to be uh, quite a lot uh, smaller. Um, so I have to change the setup a bit uh, before we continue. So if you're out of beer or or, or anything like that, then um, Go grab a new beer, and uh, and uh, I'll be I'll be I'll just be making some few adjustments here to make sure that that this next fly is gonna is gonna work out. <laughs> I need to add, attach my hook uh, before uh, before I can I can I can really focus the camera. Maybe not gold one, maybe a red one, I think. A red one would be nice. Or a brown one, or a black one. <laughs> you know how difficult it is to find a specific beat in something like this? It's not that easy. 
Oh, no, I got it. Got the one that I wanted. There we go. So. Aha! And we are good to go. Oh, I just need to take out all of that crap. You don't need to see that. Yeah, there we go. So I think the camera is... I think now the camera is aligned and, uh, and we're ready to go for this... Uh, this second fly of the evening. Oh, I need to change my time third, of course, as well. Um, hope you've got a fresh beer. This second fly is something completely different. This is a small nymph that is really, really uh, a well fishing pattern for, for any type of trout in rivers and in streams. It's also a nice pattern for grayling. I've used this in Norway in Glomma, the river Glomma as well. Uh, and it's also a really nice one for, for, for rainbow trout. So if you're fishing for wild rainbows, this will be in streams and, and lakes, this will be good. But it will also be very good for uh, the, the, the Danish lakes uh, where we keep, where, where you, can, you can buy a license and then you can go fish for stock fish. It's called put and take in, in, in Danish. Basically it is you pay to fish out some fish that some other people have put in there. So they put fish in and you take them away from there. Put and take, it's called. <laughs> I don't know if that concept is, is, anywhere, uh, is anywhere else in the world, but we have a lot of that in Denmark. And those are quite ni nice lakes because uh, a lot of the time, you know, a lot of young people can get some experience with fly fishing and it's a good place to... To, to to get experience on on how exactly you you tackle uh, you tackle uh, uh, catching fish and uh, and playing fish and, and stuff like that so so and it's it can also be good fun um, so this is a great pattern for for that type of uh, fishing as well and what we have here is uh, this is a chimco hook uh, their uh, their uh, gamma rouge hook uh, or crustacean hook uh, this is the 2457 I think it's called and I, I removed the barb in order to be able to have my my small uh, bead here attached to this and uh, and I think that's a good idea to do if you plan to to fish catch and release of course if you're fishing in one of these put and take lakes then you're probably going to take the fish away with you that that you kill uh, then you know it, it doesn't really matter but um, then you probably would leave the the barb on but but in my uh, in my experience, you can you can easily land uh, many 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 fish without the barb, because uh, as long as as long as you keep a tight line uh, out out uh, when when playing the fish. So the first thing we need for this is gonna be uh, basically some flesh, because where did I put that? Oh, it, it fell to the floor. Because this is gonna have a bit of flesh material. As, as one of the main components of the fly here. So I'm going to take some strands of this quite, quite luminescent uh, uh, flesh. It's, uh, it's called Mirage flesh, flesh 
and it's 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 probably one of the flesh materials that reflects the most light so this is really really good it, it in in murky waters it really makes the 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 trout notice this fly and it's it's uh, in particular good for the uh, for the uh, for the stocked rainbows as well because they will grab almost anything as long as it's not too big so i took maybe oh sorry about that need to change the camera ah yannick um they they look a bit uh, frankensteinish uh, as well here in denmark but you can you can you can definitely get them to take flies um, I, 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 that's, I, I, I would guarantee you that you can get them to, 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 to grab flies. It's, it's a matter of how you fish and, uh, and, and, and they, they, they will take flies uh, if, if you persist, persist and, and give it a bit of time. Uh, some other patterns like a uh, cat's whisker and a woolly bugger. Woolly bugger is, is one of the best all time flies for, for, uh, for, for the stocked rainbows. So. I've tied down the flesh here, and we're gonna use most of these as the uh, as the uh, on on top of the dubbing we're gonna use, and then we're gonna use the last strand as as a rip all the way up here. So now we need some uh, some dubbing, and uh, and for this some 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 dark dark gray or or dark brown colored dubbing is is really great. A uh, hair ears type of dubbing or squirrel dubbing is is really really good. I have uh, some of these uh, boxes here. I've I've just filled. How many was there? Five, fifteen of these when sorting my dubbing. So I bought some of these uh, without uh, contents, and then I just took and sorted all my dubbing. So now I have fifteen different of uh, of these uh, <laughs> these dubbing boxes with all the different dubbing I have. They are aligned in the in the cabinet over there. So basically, I just take. Some of this gray dubbing here, and for a fly like this, it's it's not necessary it's not necessary to to use a, a dubbing a dubbing loop. There we go. And as I turn this along the hook here, I'm gonna try to try to get it get a tapering effect. So I want it to be fairly fairly thin in the beginning. And then gradually, I want it to become thicker and thicker as I move towards the uh, towards uh, where I'm going to tie the thorax of the fly. There we go. Applying some more dubbing here. A bit more. The color scheme here is. Is basically it's not that important, but but this is just gonna be this is just gonna be one of those type of patterns that that fish will grab because it just it just it just looks like food you know, and and fish are stupid they don't have hands so the only th way they can test if something is food is by trying to eat it, and we are very fortunate that fish are built that way because a lot of the time. I think that the fish would, if if that was not the case, the fish would see right through what we were doing. So now I take the, uh, I take the, uh, the flash here. I want some of the strands that are in furthest away. There we go. And then I place this right on top. I pull it quite tight. So I place it right on top, so you can see it's it's just going to be a thin strand, just on top of the uh, on top of the dubbing body. Cut away the flesh, and then I take the final strand here, and I turn this as the rip. Again, to give it a bit of sparkle. There we go. So you can now see I have this this really bright shining uh, thing on top of the uh, on top of the uh, the fly. 
now we can do uh, some different things. Uh, one of the things that I really like is basically just to have a hackle here and then make a more bulky, darker front part. But another thing that's really cool is if you take um, some mylar tinsel, because this is broader. So I've taken some mylar tinsel and then I tie this double. So I take this and then I double it. It was too thick to be used for the for the first part of the body, but I'm gonna use this for the second part. And then again, I'm gonna tie this on top of the hook here, so the long part of this is pointing backwards. And this is gonna be our carapace. Just have that off to the side if possible. There we go. There we go. And then I'm going to take a feather. Hope you can see it's right on top there. Hello, Alejo. E ano. I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry if, if I offended you, but <laughs> I, tr I tried to pronounce it uh, uh, as well as I could. Alejo. Alejo. But greetings to you. Uh, Colombia is quite, quite a long way from here. You, you were probably aware of that. <laughs> so, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a hackle. You can use a Brahma, you can use a Partridge hackle, uh, you can use any, any type of hackle that has a lot of, uh, of markings on there. And, and I've pulled off all the, uh, all the feathers all the, the fluffy part of the feather and now I'm gonna just very very carefully fold the rest of the uh, of the hackle backwards there we go so now I've folded everything backwards and then I'm gonna tie this down so that the uh, like this so that the natural curve is gonna is gonna face down on top of the fly here Just gonna tie this so it 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 fits right where the uh, right where the tinsel is. That's annoying. Move away, tinsel. I should have left the. So you see how that sticks up there, and this is gonna be the legs on this on this fly. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to make a small dubbing loop. Now we can. We can pull all the dubbing out from there without having a dubbing loop. But we need some dubbing that has a, a, is a contrast to, to the first dubbing we used. So if you have anything that's darker, if you have a brown, something along these lines is really good. So, so that it, it, it's very clear there are two different sections of the fly. Again, some natural dubbing like hairs or squirrel is nice because it has these coarser hairs. Then I'm gonna take the uh, take the dubbing here, hold everything back. And then I'm gonna make a thorax, a part of the body here in front. the The overall and exact colors you use for this is not that crucial. It's not that important. The important thing is that there is a contrast and that there is a difference between the first dubbing you use and then the second dubbing is is darker. There we go. Then I'm gonna pull out some of the dubbing here with my dubbing teaser. Then I'm gonna fold the hackle here forwards and then I'm gonna tie the hackle down. Right there. I'm going to cut off the hackle and then I'm going to use these two to keep the hackle down on the sides of the fly. You see? So the hackle is just going to come out on the sides of the fly now.
gonna cut off the uh, the tinsel. Then I'm gonna make a wood finish. And then you have a nice looking small nymph that has some really really nice uh, imitation of legs it has some shiny points as well uh, that will that will light up in murky waters and and this fly can really really find some fish it can be fished upstream it can be fished downstream uh, swinging it can be used you know in still water it can be used basically anywhere but but to have this uh, I have another variation of this fly that's called the flashback nymph that that basically has some of the same properties but is just in, in another color scheme and the hackle is done a little differently but flies like this just they they look like food and they just catch a lot a lot of fish there we go two part thorax <laughs> I'm glad to hear I'm glad to hear that Jenik it's a bit difficult. I don't know how easily you can see a fly of this size on your on your screen. I hope it's it's fairly easy to see, um, um, because it is a small fly. But but I I, I think I think it's nice to do uh, you know to to do some some different styles and and some different sizes every now and then, and uh, and I needed uh, I need some of these for for my for my box for later this year, um. Anyway, so why not do uh, do some of these. I don't even think this has a name. The other one where the hackle is just turned just where the two dubbing meets is called the flashback nymph. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm sure that a fly of this style uh, has has been made a million times and given a million different names. Uh, one of the flies that has a lot of this flesh in it and, and that really works well is called the, uh, the Rainbow Warrior, uh, which is a fly made by um, Lance Egan. One of the cool guys from uh, from um, Flyfish Food, um, which uh, which does some amazing amazing work. And if you haven't done so, you should you should swing by the Flyfish Food uh, YouTube channel. They they do some great stuff. Um, yeah, you can definitely use this in Seamstead, Heidi. Definitely use this in Seamstead. It would be really really nice for the upper parts. There are some uh, some of the um, some of the uh, fish farms uh, along Simistad as well, so so this will definitely slay some rainbows. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Um, I don't know what you're saying or what your name is. Uh, you're writing in Cyrillic, but uh, uh, nice to see you here. Um, I'm I'm sorry, but you missed all the fun uh, because the the live stream here is about to end. Uh, I'm a bit tired. It's been a long day, and I had a lot of troubles with a lot of different uh, uh, video formats. I tried something new to make new fly tying videos but it just didn't work out so I had to I had to completely scratch four different videos I made um, which was kind of annoying but uh, you know that's life. <laughs> Fancy Pants Nymph. That's a good name. That's a good name Tucker. That's a good name. Fancy Pants Nymph. Yeah. It is a bit fancy. It is a bit fancy. It's not difficult though. Um, it's quite easy to make. So, but I think um, I think I'll be signing off for now. Um, stay tuned on the channel for a lot of more fly tying videos. And as as always, if you need any kind of fly tying material or any kind of fly tying gear in in any way, then uh, our sh our online store is open twenty four seven, and we have more than. 15,000 different uh, products uh, in the store so uh, I think you you would find uh, uh, most of whatever you could ever think of you would need and um, also um, I plan to do some of these uh, these talks about uh, a certain type of fishing and uh, where you can you can supply all the questions and then we're going to draw some of the questions and and basically just just uh, reply to whatever you wanted to talk about is is whatever we're going to talk about so something like that could probably be fun to do 
Um, but I would invite more people than just me, so we would be able to uh, to 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 um, to reflect on the question and hear more sides than than just you know my experiences. So, thanks for now, and uh, take care out there, and uh, and good luck out on the water. Hope spring will arrive soon. I'm looking.